Oh my god, dude. That's so gnarly. That's the last of the land. Goodbye, land. Goodbye. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Let's go. On this trip, we'll sail to the Bahamas from Florida on a 29-foot vessel, a sailboat named the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> in life, there are two types of fun. Type one, fun in the moment. Hanging out with friends, playing sports, whatever you like to do. Type two is fun in retrospect. Like going and biking across the country, surviving a bear attack and the like. It's hiking in the rain. It's the stuff you look back on and you're like, wow, that was crazy. But that was me living life. This trip is type two fun. All the way. Hey, seriously, is this safe? 50, 50. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Captain and owner of this sailboat was my good friend from college, Sean, who I hadn't seen in a couple years. He worked remote, and he was going to go live in the Bahamas, but had never, ever done any deep ocean sailing, and he needed a crew. That's where we came in. Both me and the one other person that I would bring to Davy Jones' locker with me, if anything went wrong, my buddy Hank. We gotta keep him in frame. <laughs> my sailing experience is pretty much zero. I did sailing for one summer camp at on Lake Merritt in Oakland, California, where I grew up. Um, and I remember we sailed on these, you know, like six foot boats, little tiny things. Uh, and I remember capsizing one time, and that's pretty much it for me. Yeah, uh, likewise. I would say my sailing experience is above average. My dad's from the East Coast, spent some time out there sailing in similar little six foot little opti boats as well as like up to 10 to 16 foot boats, but never deep ocean, always in a bay. So suffice to say we were uh, embarking on a new adventure and we were stepping outside of our comfort zone. So, with our plan set, we packed our bags and headed to the airport. Now, you see, our friend Sean had rented a car with the intention of picking up supplies and us from the airport. But it broke down and he lost communication with the owner. As such, our timeline got pushed way back. This meant that we'd go straight from the airport down south towards Homestead, where we'd go to a Publix, get some supplies, grab some dinner, and then drop the rental car off and grab an Uber to a random spot in the Everglades where our boat was parked. <laughs> We're at a random spot in the Everglades. <laughs> Hank right there running, boats parked out at sea. We gotta ferry this stuff via kayak. Right on like the side there. Okay, look at this shit. The boat, it's like right there. We got our stuff. This is like a freeway bridge. Car coming here. And there's the kayak and the paddleboard. What keeps it afloat? So the so bottom water comes through. No, water doesn't come through. It just, it just it isn't full. Air, but we can tape it up in the morning. Oh man, I don't know if you can see it. I'm in this dinky little fucking boat. We're getting folded like a toucan. That's the ocean. There's the boat. I don't know if you can see it. There. Try and get over there. Alrighty. We're on the boat. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Water got on the bilge electrical, the new bilge pump. So they're rewiring that real quick. It's what, like 1 a.m.? We haven't left yet. Got most of the stuff on board. Quite a lot of organizing to do. So, uh, 
I'm gonna help oh. out. We'll be back soon. Did you guys get it? No, dude, the, the, the pliers. Ah. Yeah, you gotta remake the moment. They did it, but we're gonna remake it for the video. All right, three, two, and go. Is it going? Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. The bilge is bilging. Dude, when I, was, when I was coming down here and the bilge went out, I was behind the wheel, under sail, running over here with my manual bilge pump, pumping into the bucket, <laughs> throwing it overboard. <laughs> it was so sketchy. <laughs> 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 Manually while sailing, check my head in quick, go pump some water. Yeah, no, and like, as soon as I was done, like, filling up half the bucket every time, I'd be, like, 20 degrees off course, and the the force sail was about to fucking tack over, jibe over, and, yeah, it was never good. <laughs> Nothing ever came of it. But now Ooh. I have you guys. No, so you guys are going to have two big jobs um, when we're under sail. And that's going to be, A, I have it right here. Steering and sheets. <laughs> number one, and then solar and battery management. And then scrum the deck, because you're the fucking crew. <laughs> Do we swab the poop deck? <laughs> Salud. Salud. Fucking A. To family. To your boat. <laughs> family. Well, yeah, welcome aboard, boys. Um, so... First off, most importantly, this is our oh shit cabinet, alright? Hey, we're underway. It's taking a nap. It's like 4 a.m. We got the maps going, what? Looks like we're gonna have some pretty decent wind. What, are they, like 20 knots? <laughs> <laughs> exciting, exciting, all strapped in. Let's do it. We're gonna basically go to the tip of like where the Bay of Biscayne starts and then we'll uh, be heading through a little channel out to the ocean. It's always gonna be windy. It's like it's sunrise though. <laughs> That's the ocean. That's the last of the land. Yeah, this is epic. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, dude, that's so gnarly. That's the last of the land. Goodbye, land. Goodbye. We are now on the open ocean. You can't fucking tell us. Bob and boat. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Let's go. But where exactly were we going? We'd be sailing from Key Largo over 75 miles across the Gulf Stream to the westernmost islands of the Bahamas. Specifically, North Bimini and Alice Town, where we could go to clear customs. Gnarly as heck. Holy sight. Captain's gone off. It's not 
water. I don't even see the discoloration over there where there's white caps on the reef. Blue one right behind us too. We would continue to sail uninterrupted until we heard a snap as one of the mast shroud lines ripped from the deck. This left us dead in the water, and we rushed to reel in the sails to save the mast. We now placed our hopes and sanity upon the little engine in the berth of the Flying Dutchman. Let's, let's do the update. One of our battery banks is dead. The fridge and freezer is dead. His cell phone and charger is dead. Uh, what else is not working? My mask. Your mask line that holds the fucking mask on is broken. Rip mid sail. Uh, but we are in the Bahamas. Ready to go ashore to customs. Goodbye, fearless leader. Look at him. Okay, editing Liam here. Let's get uh, let's get to some details, right? Because it's not as simple as just going to the Bahamas when you're sailing. First off, as you can see, we've got our fearless captain headed off on that little paddleboard. Woo! He's legally our captain, and we're his crew. So he takes our documents and he goes to the customs office. Like I said, like when I pulled out the hundred, he like opened up his wallet. Like he's not like going into the register or anything, right? We also have to put a little yellow flag. It's a quarantine flag. We put that up on our, our mast and that shows kind of our status um, that we haven't entered. So it's really interesting. We've made it to the Bahamas. That crossing did not go as planned. We lost his phone charger. His cell phone and charger is dead. <laughs> and his phone charger, he probably should have got a new phone before the trip, but he only had a wireless charger and his port was broken. So we had to get a wireless charger and we're on this tiny little island in the middle of nowhere. And additionally, the fridge had fallen, so all our food was ruined. Um, and it had like fallen and broken. One of those nice kind of like 12 volt fridges. The fridge and freezer is dead. Anyway, that had all broken. And more importantly, most importantly, your mast line that holds the fucking mast on is broken, ripped mid sail. What does that mean for us? So we weren't trying to finish here in North Bimini. This was a stop. We didn't want to spend those nights at sea, so we were going to bounce island hop. The next island we were going to go to actually was Chub Key. I'll put that on the map right now. So you'll see where Chub Key is. It's kind of a, a decent distance from where we are currently. And then our next stop after that, our final stop was Eleuther. It's this hidden gem. This is our, our, uh, our North Star. This is where we were trying to head. And more importantly, most importantly, we had plane tickets booked from North Eleuther Airport back to Florida. None of that plan included our rigging being broken, let alone all that other chaos. And with the crossing we had... Ooh. Holy shit. <laughs> uh. We were not feeling confident 
or in the right spirits mentally to make that crossing anyway to the next island, even if we felt comfortable with our rigging, which we didn't. So now we're stuck on this tiny little island in the north of the Bahamas. We've got, what, seven, 10 days here? If we can't get to North Eleuthera, we're gonna eat that plane ticket. We were at a crossroads. Ideally, we could get off this island. If we could fix the rigging, we'd be gone. But we were prepared in the worst case scenario to start looking at alternative options. We'll go into that more in detail in the next episode where we are stranded on the Bahamas. And uh, that's not all. You thought the storm on the crossing was bad. It was a light one. We were just getting the remnants of a storm. It wasn't even a storm. It was just waves. Well, you're in for a treat because the first night in the Bahamas, that's what I call my hell night. The worst night I've ever had in my entire life. So stay tuned as we make a cross around a coral reef in crazy waves, as we avoid being rushed and pushed into the rocks, and as we get a ride on a more rural island to get a ferry. Back to uh, South Bimini. To get a boat to get a seaplane, <laughs> to charter a plane, to escape, maybe, this island in the Bahamas. So tune in next time. If you're watching this far, thanks so much for sticking around. I, you know, I don't make very much money and I'm able to do this, but I don't have time to do all this video editing. And it's something that I'm really passionate about. So I appreciate your patience. If you can just, you know, support me, comment, like, share, and um, hopefully we can get to the point where we can get monetized. So at least I can get a little bit of money back for all this time. I'm into it. But it's really more for you and for me to just enjoy the process of this visual diary. So anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Thanks for journeying with us. It's been a thrill. But before you head off, let's seal the deal. If you're digging the vibes, don't just flee. Like, subscribe, and join out. Our family.